Grand Rogue stock first caught my eye at 20 Canadian cents. I made my first entry with them at 38 Canadian cents, largely because there was a delay. I needed to open an account with Crest Trade. You can't actually buy Grown Rogue grown rogue stock on interactive brokers. Anyway, point being, I entered at 38 cents and they're now priced at 75 cents. That's a price increase of 97% between the time when I first identified the stock and bought it to now. And so the main reason for the huge jump in share price is almost like twofold. The first thing is around their moat. Now they have uh, a competitive advantage compared to pretty much all other cannabis companies with the exception of maybe one called Glasshouse Brands. Now this competitive advantage or this moat is that they are able to manufacture the cheapest cannabis per pound and it's also some of the highest grade cannabis in the US. You know, they manufacture a flower which is uh, top five to top 10 in all of the states where they sell this product. And so what they're able to do is they're just able to undercut pretty much every cannabis company in the US. They're not in every state, but in the states where they are in, for example, in Oregon, they were able to undercut Cure Relief, who have a market cap of 4.7 billion. They undercut them on pricing and quality, and this forced Cure Relief out of the state of Oregon. And as uh, Grown Rogue start to move into new states, they'll probably have around uh, five states off the top of my head. You can see up on the uh, video now, like where they're based. You know, this is their strategic strategic mission moving forward, is to gradually move into new states on a case-by-case -case basis, evaluating each state depending on the barrier of entry and gradually taking as much market share as possible. And so not only is like one of their major competitive advantages that they have like the most competitive pricing and the highest quality cannabis around, but it's also around the structure of the company. Now again, what you'll see up on your screen now, this is Cure Relief's uh, company structure. So what they, how they operate is that they have a decentralized chain of command. What does this mean? It means all of the like decision-making, execution and strategy, it needs to climb through different uh, levels of the chain of command before it gets sign-off and agreement, which slows down the execution process. On the other hand, Grown Rogue have a very simple business model and it's completely different. And this enables them to open up manufacturing facilities very, very quickly and they can move from state to state, set these up super quickly, and then move on to the next state. And so Grown Rogue, the way they operate is that they have these 50,000 square foot manufacturing facilities. They have this very um, almost like off the shelf business model where they can just replicate this 50,000 square foot manufacturing facility in each state they move in. And so it's basically as if they have an independent business operating uh, in isolation. You know, these 50,000 square foot facilities are operating almost like ind ind independent businesses. Of course, they form part of a larger business, you know, Grown Rogue, but they're operating with this efficiency, with this agility that companies uh, of a larger market cap like Cure Relief just do not have. And so you can see on this map where they have these operating facilities already. They have two in partnership with another cannabis company called Goodness Growth. They are actually like Goodness Growth um, facilities and it's almost as if uh, Grown Rogue are operating there in, in terms of like a consultancy relationship where they're advising Goodness Growth on what they need to do in order to enhance the uh, quality of their flour and enhance the efficiency in the manufacturing process as well. And so this is kind of almost um, a testament to them being recognized uh, in the industry as being experts in manufacturing high quality flour and developing a highly efficient uh, manufacturing process which enables this cannabis to get out of the door very quickly as well. And so the plan for Grown Rogue moving forward is that Obi Strickler, the CEO, has mentioned that he's looking to open six more of these small 50,000 50, square foot manufacturing facilities in different states across the US. That's what he said so far. He's also said though that once they get to that point, they're gonna reevaluate where they go from there. It could be that they move the goalposts even further, which means even more expansion for Grown Rogue. Uh, right now, he was looking at them as being more of a small-scale um, niche operator that are going to create very, very high quality flour, but make it scarce. You know, things may change in the future depending on how much they grow um, and where they take things from there. And so what's really important to look at in this is that this is like a very, very scalable business model. 
these 50,000 square foot um, operations, manufacturing facilities, can be set up relatively quickly. You know, the other competitive advantage that Grown Rogue has is around the pricing and quality. They can pick and choose which states they move into. And again, the way that Grown Rogue are gonna do this and OB Strickler are gonna do this is they're gonna look at the states with the lowest barrier of entry. What do I mean where I, when I say that? I mean the areas where there's gonna be the least competition. Where can they move into that's gonna be selling the poorest quality flour at the highest prices? You know, because they have um, such an efficient uh, model where they're, ma where they're making, um, you know, some of the cheapest flour around, they're able to price their product at a third of the price of some of the competitors in other states. So they're undercutting them severely, right? And this is, is I can't really stress enough how competitive this advantage is. And so this is kind of pretty much the investment thesis for um, Grown Rogue. You know, certainly my, my personal, um, in my personal investing, I'm gonna be putting more money in. Yes, the price is significantly higher than when I first bought it, but I'm looking at this in terms of like a longer term play. You know, bearing in mind that they're not even halfway through their execution strategy. You know, they're looking at opening up six more facilities, right? You know, what impact is that gonna have on the share price? You know, they've already demonstrated a proof of concept with me. They have a business model that is scalable. They've already entered a number of different states, uh, new markets with this business model um, and it's proved successful. They're undercutting some of the biggest uh, cannabis manufacturers, well, the biggest, you know, the biggest company by market cap, uh, Cureleaf, um, and certainly uh, some of these other companies as well where they have uh, VPs on high six-figure salaries, you know, they're just not going to be able to compete on pricing. And so I did a far more um, in detailed, in-depth um, cross-examination and an analysis of Grown Rogue's business model. I go into a lot more detail in this video. The link is in the description below. I highly recommend you do your own kind of due diligence as well. There are links to some of the resources and references I've used in that video as well, just so that you can have a look at the scope of the research I've done. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and see you in the next one. All the best.